Now, with the birth of a nation set to open in Boston, Massachusetts, one man vows to stop it. A 40-year-old newspaper publisher named William Monroe Trotter. Trotter did not want this movie to go around the country unanswered. Trotter schedules a meeting with Boston Mayor James Curley, hoping he'll heed his request to ban the racist film. But when Trotter arrives at City Hall on April 7th, he gets a huge shock. It seems that the movie's director has also been invited. D.W. Griffith was come to town to defend his movie. He insisted that the film was historically accurate and was not libelous to blacks. In the end, the mayor sees no reason to ban the film. And on April 10th, The Birth of a Nation is shown at Boston's Tremont Theater. There, theatergoers are given printed souvenir books, just like this one at the Museum of the Moving Image. But Trotter's fight isn't over yet. Trotter was angry about it. He was not going to sit still after Mayor Curley's ruling. To stop further screenings, Trotter and his comrades decide to buy tickets and stage a protest right in the theater's lobby. On April 17th, Trotter sets his plan into motion. Trotter came across Boston Common. The crowd is swelling behind him. But when they reach the theater, it seems the managers have gotten wind of Trotter's protest and instructed employees not to sell tickets to African Americans. When they wouldn't let him buy the tickets, that just fueled that fire in Trotter's belly. Outraged, Trotter refuses to leave the lobby. So the theater's manager decides to remove Trotter and his group by force. Suddenly, uniformed police are coming down from around the corner, and you have a real confrontation. Trotter shouting, other protesters are shouting, police are trying to clear the lobby. Is this the end of Trotter's daring plan? April 1915, Boston. Civil rights activist William Monroe Trotter is attempting to stop the racist film, The Birth of a Nation, from screening at the Tremont Theater. But just as the group takes over the theater's lobby, authorities arrive and arrest the protesters, including Trotter. So is this the finale of a cinematic showdown? Trotter is arrested and jailed, along with his fellow demonstrators. And as the theater continues to show the film, it seems as though Trotter's audacious stunt has failed. But the next day, news of his demonstration makes headlines around the nation. Trotter's protest shines a harsh spotlight on the birth of a nation. In certain cities, they were able to get Griffith to trim or cut some of the most extremely offensive moments in the film. Trotter dies in 1934, and even though he never managed to ban the birth of a nation outright, his efforts are seen as an important part of changing public perception of the film, from a cinematic triumph to one of the most racist pieces of propaganda in American history. But perhaps Trotter's greatest accomplishment has to do with more than just a movie. He was pushing the civil rights movement in a direction called direct action. I mean, he was way ahead of his time. Trotter laid the first stone of the modern civil rights movement.